Barbeau and I am the Health Commissioner for Baltimore City. It is my pleasure to welcome you for the kickoff events to Youth Violence Prevention Week. Can I get some hands of applause, please? Excellent. We're going to have a terrific program, but before we get started, I want to introduce Dr. Franklin Lance from the Mount Lebanon Baptist Church for our blessing. Good morning all, good morning. Because this is such an important occasion, we do believe that the investment of the faith community plays a critical part in what we do in making our streets safer. And so with that, we have the honor this morning of asking God's blessings upon what we will be doing as it relates to safe streets. So for all who are so inclined, I would ask that you would engage with me in a moment of prayer. God, we come before you right now. And we thank you once again for yet a new day. We do affirm with the psalmist that this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We now, God, ask for your direction in what we engage to do. For we realize that we come not figuratively to save lives, but literally the work that will take place will help save a life and change someone's life. Therefore, we ask for your prudence. We ask for your guidance. We come not for any self-aggrandizement, but rather we come for kingdom work. Therefore, guide our thoughts, guide our hands, guide our actions, help us to change lives. That way we can affirm that God is still alive and the devil is still a liar. For all who affirm this prayer with me in the name of Jesus, we thus say, Amen. amen. Thank you, Dr. Lance. Uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce our mayor, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. As you all know, she is one of our bigger supporters, biggest supporters in terms of reducing youth violence. So it's my pleasure to introduce Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I said somebody out here must be on good behavior. This beautiful weather we have today, I think this is, we are truly blessed this, you know, this could have been a dreary day and that would have sent a whole different message about what we're trying to do here on Safe Street. So I'm glad we have a, a beautiful, beautiful day. Dr. Barbeau, thank you for all of your hard work. Thank you for the introduction. We are grateful, uh, Dr. Barbeau, for the work that you are doing to support the efforts of our partners to reduce juvenile violence in Baltimore. I'm glad that we're also joined here by several other partners, Council President Jack Young, Councilman Nick Mosby, and Councilman Brandon Scott. Thank you all for being here. I'd like to also thank our hosts for today, the staff and the students of Frederick Douglass High School. And last, but we know certainly not least, I'd like to thank all the community representatives from the Greater Mandalman community for being here today. So I'd like to thank you for joining me today to kick off National Youth Violence Prevention Week in Baltimore. During this annual week-long initiative, activities and events will be held nationwide to spotlight the issue of youth violence in our country to identify strategies to combat the, the epidemic, as well as to promote positive role models that we can, we can do, all of us can be role models to make our community safer. Fortunately, we are blessed in Baltimore to have many partners in the fight. Young people, the citizens, outreach workers, clergy, community leaders, all gathered here today have accepted this challenge. Everyone here recognizes the role they play in making Baltimore safer and making our young people, um, and excuse me, and Youth Violence Prevention Week is an opportunity that we all have towards that goal of making the city safer. We need everyone in the neighborhood to become a part of the solution, becoming a mentor, teaching a young person how to resolve conflict peacefully, participating in the city's Hire One Youth campaign, engaging youth in a conversation about tolerance. We can do all of these things. We know that we cannot succeed if we're not working as one toward this important goal. I have a goal, to grow Baltimore by 10,000 families over the next 10 years. I know it is an ambitious goal, but grow, building a growing city, especially in tough times, is not something that government does alone. Everyone has responsibilities, and I know the community leaders that are here can attest to that. 
at, her, at home, at the, in your church, in your neighborhood, at school, or at work. During these tough times, we must all strengthen our community by building social capital and increasing citizen engagement. It's one of the things that I appreciate about the Greater Mondawmin uh, community. It's one. It, there's so many communities around our city um, should sh should take a page out of their book. It's an intergenerational group. It is a growing group and is a group that is always looking for new partners. And I really appreciate that, that you are not uh, resting on your laurels, that you are growing uh, your community association, and today is a testament to that. We know that you also provide young people with support that strengthens our communities. And I know if we continue to do this all over the city, we can grow Baltimore. We've made significant progress redu reducing juvenile violence over the past sever several years. Together, we've reduced juvenile homicide by nearly 50% 50, 50 and shootings by 70% since 2007. During the past two years alone, juvenile violence has been reduced by 37%. And we've accomplished this while reducing juvenile arrests 60% since 2006 and 25% over the past year. It's hard to imagine, but in 1999, there were 100 68 children shot in the city of Baltimore. By comparison, in 2011, there were 28. <laughs> to me, this is a sign that Baltimore can be a safe city. You know, we don't, we think that one child being shot is too much, but we have tangible evidence of the progress we're making. Reducing youth violence requires a collaborative approach, approach between law enforcement, juvenile justice, as well as core service agencies. We must work together to make positive opportunities in all of our communities available to young people. Baltimore's law enforcement and juvenile services agencies have worked hard to develop and to implement creative approaches to reduce juvenile crime as well as juvenile victimization. We focus our resources on the highest risk youth increased juvenile warrant service, and developed unprecedented information sharing between the State Departments of Juvenile Services and Social Services, the school system, and the Baltimore Police and Health Departments. Through initiatives like violent, uh, Violence Intervention Program and Operation Save Kids, we have jointly identified youth who are at risk, at the highest risk, of becoming victims or perpetrators of violence, and we provided them with both increased supervision as well as services. And in targeted communities, we have introduced the Safe Streets program. Safe Streets Baltimore is an evidence-based public health initiative that uses credible messengers to stop shootings and homicides in targeted Baltimore neighborhoods. Through initiatives like Safe Street Communities, where it was once, excuse me, where, through initiatives like Safe Streets, the communities where it was once normal to solve problems with guns, they're now embracing an attitude that shootings are not acceptable. I'm proud to announce that here, that the health department, excuse me, has selected Greater Mondam and Coordinating Council as the next community to implement safe streets in Baltimore. Greater Mondam has the strong community partners, partnerships as well as the excitement and dedication to implement this initiative. Congratulations to you all. Thank you for your hard work and best wishes as you embark upon this new initiative. This week, the city is sponsoring over 70 exciting youth violence prevention activities and events that our young people can participate in. Today, I am challenging everyone here to encourage at least five young people to sign up and to take part in one of these activities. And you can't count the ones behind me because they hear me right now, so you can't count them. Each event gives young people an opportunity to meet new people and learn things and build social capital uh, needed to be a part of the solution. And I can tell you, our young people want to be a part of the solution. We just have to engage them in meaningful ways, and that's what this is about. We can't, we can't make it happen if, we don't, if they don't know about it. So I know the young people behind me have Twitter and Facebook. They're probably tweeting now about how they want to glean. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. But we can, you can spread the word about the uh, initiatives and the events that are going on, and I hope you take an opportunity to do that. <clears throat> Reach out to other young people that you know uh, and help give them the opportunity to grow during your Youth, Provil youth Violence Prevention Week. Thank you again for coming out, for all of your hard work to uh, reduce youth violence in Baltimore. 
Now it is my pleasure to introduce someone who cares about the young people of our city, who is committed to even further reducing youth violence in our city, Council President Jack Young. Good morning. Good morning, Frederick Douglass. Good morning to everyone. First, I'm happy to be here this morning, happy to be a part of this great announcement. I want to thank the uh, Greater Mondawmin Coordinating Council for, and, and the nine neighborhoods for your hard work and dedication, and that's one reason why you were awarded this grant. But I can tell you, coming from East Baltimore, Safe Streets really, really works. Um, they took an area um, in East Baltimore over on Miami Street where all they did was settle things with killing and violence. And that whole thing has been changed. So I know that um, this program, Safe uh, Street, is going to be a very exciting program for you up here. The children need to get engaged. You need to get engaged with them. Don't be afraid of them. Speak to them. Say good morning. And you'll be surprised our young people receive that in a great way. But I just want to let you know that um, I'm always happy to be here, especially when it's dealing with things that's going to make our youth change their lives from a negative to a positive. I want them to start looking at colleges instead of looking at careers and drugs and, and shootings and going to jail. There is a brighter future for them, and I'm looking forward to working with them to reach those goals, to go to college and do the right thing and come back to Baltimore, not go away and stay away, but come back and contribute to the growth of Baltimore. The mayor has a program growing Baltimore by 10,000, and it's achievable and it's reachable. And I just want to commend the mayor on the great job that she's doing to reach out in order to uh, make our city a safer city. So again, thank you for having me. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the councilman of this district, Councilman Nick Mosby, a rising star in the city council. This is a very exciting moment for me today, standing at the historic Frederick Douglass Senior High School, knowing the, uh, the, the history, the culture, um, and all the legacy laid out in the community of Greater Mondawmin throughout the years, I know that this program can potentially be that catalyst and that spark to help rejuvenate and change around um, some of the potential that we see in our streets. Um, I'm happy I and mean, glad that the mayor under her leadership has decided to uh, look at uh, violence, not just from a, a, a criminal and, and policing uh, element, but also uh, from a public health perspective. I think this is critical. I mean, this is important not only for the city, but this could be a national model and maybe even international model. So I'm just eager and excited and happy, and I look very forward to working with Greater Mondawmin and the leadership of uh, Dr. Lance and the leadership of Council President uh, Bernard Jack C. Young um, to, uh, to continue to make this effort uh, uh, momentum, uh, a momentum for the community. So once again, thank you. If you can't tell how, much, how excited I am and how eager I am to uh, start, you know, I asked Dr. Uh, Bobo, can we start tomorrow? So, uh, but we're going to start, and it's going to work out. And like I said, this will not only be a national model, this will be an international model, and I'm excited. Thank you, Councilman Mosby. Uh, we at the Health Department are very excited and, and looking forward to expanding safe streets uh, to the greater Mondawmin community. Under Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, strong leadership, Baltimore has taken a progressive stance by recognizing that violence shouldn't just be exclusively dealt with by the criminal justice system, that public health has a role to play. And it's violence in our communities is a public health epidemic, and we need to play a role, a strong role in that. And so we appreciate Madam Mayor's strong leadership and support for addressing violence as a public health issue. It is essential that we continue to support evidence-based initiatives such as Safe Streets Baltimore as a component of our violence prevention strategy. And as was mentioned earlier, while we've made significant strides in reducing the number of homicides in youth, it is my sad duty to report that homicides are still the leading cause of death among Baltimore City residents 15 to 24 years of age. This year's theme for, you, for Youth Violence Prevention Week is Building Peace, Block by Block. Again, Building Peace, Block by Block. It means all of us have a role to play in making Baltimore safer and working towards solutions to improve outcomes for Baltimore's children. As part of Healthy Baltimore 2015, our goal is to decrease the rate of juvenile homicide and non-fatal shooting victims by 30%. 
Through our Neighborhood Health Initiative, the Health Department has been working to engage communities on issues such as these and empower them to take steps to improve health outcomes in their community. Only through greater collaboration with public, private, and community organizations, as well as educational institutions, elected officials, and community residents, will we begin to make positive, lasting changes. That's why all this week, the Health Department is collaborating with public and private sector partners to sponsor over 75 events and workshops both adults and children can and should be attending. Topics include gun violence, reducing gun violence, reducing bullying, cyberbullying, teen dating violence, and a full listing is available on our website at baltimorehealth.org forward slash YVP week. This year we have a diverse range of events. There's something for everyone. And some of the highlights include a teen dating violence prevention workshop at the Patapsco Recreation Center this Wednesday, March 21st. There will also be a screening of the documentary, The Interrupters, which follows three ceasefire violence interrupters as they go about their work, revealing their own inspired journeys of hope and redemption. And for those of you who may not know, the Baltimore Safe Streets program is a replication of the ceasefire model. Um, and you can also check out the fourth annual Playing for Peace basketball tournament this Friday, March 23rd. So, it's we so whether it's attending an event, engaging your community in a conversation about youth violence, or being a positive role model within your community, I encourage everyone to find a way this week to be part of a movement to eliminate youth violence in Baltimore. And let me just pause a moment and say that this Saturday I had the pleasure of being part of an, a small documentary that will be aired on WBAL Saturday at 8 p.m where they chronicle the lives of a young basketball team in Curtis Bay. And it's such an inspiring event to look at how that particular school and the adults are taking an active role in being role models and how they're, the students themselves are being role models for each other. And so I encourage you all to, to view that documentary again on Saturday at 8 p.m. So thank you very much, and we will now take any questions you may have on Youth Violence Prevention Week. Thank you.